Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we have the Keras Customs Decagraph Monsoon. This is a special limited edition pen from Keras Customs. They do sell the Decagraph, uh, so this design, but in an acrylic if you'd like to pick one of those up. And they may be doing more of these in the future. So let's go ahead and jump into it, and um, we'll go ahead and go over this pen. On to the size comparison. So here it is against the Platinum 3776, the Lamy 2000, and the Pilot Vanishing Point. So you can see when it is capped, it's right around the same length as all of these pins. And here's an uncapped size comparison. So you can see this is a fairly large pin when uncapped. Um, it definitely beats out 3776. Um, it pretty much beats out the Lamy 2000, maybe around the similar size depending on where you grip at. And the Vanishing Point's a little bit larger, but that's a pretty big pin. Um, considering where I grip out on both the pens, though, it will come up to about the same for me. Um, the As far as where it is, because I grip so far down on this pen. And I grip fairly high up on the vanishing point, so it, it comes out to about the same size for me. But yeah, it, it sits somewhere in the middle of all these. Alright, on to what I like about it. First thing, nib and flow. So this is a limited edition pen, which is fine, but I also got a broad titanium nib on it to make it a little bit more special in my collection. I haven't had a titanium nib before, and this is fantastic. You can get some very good line variation out of it if you're careful, and the nib writes very well. I also really like the finish. Um, if, you've, if you're into knives at all, you know titanium probably fairly well. It's a very commonly used material because of how light and durable it is, and it has a, just a fantastic feel and a fantastic look to it, and this nib is, is very, very nice. I think it fits the pen extremely well. It writes very well, and the flow is very, very consistent. I love it. The design on this pen is fantastic as well. So with this limited edition monsoon version, they went with uh, kind of a, not really a dark gray, but a, a more matte gray color. Uh, anodized aluminum with an orange body and an orange cap with gray accents. The details in this pen are fantastic. There's this little ring back here to add a little bit more texturing to it. Nothing on the back. There's uh, some some pointing up here. It isn't, it's not quite a flat circle up on the finial. And the clip, there's so many facets on this clip. You can kind of see them all there. Very interesting clip design. The clip does differentiate a little bit from the plastic models. The plastic models have a small piece of material connecting the body to the rest of the clip, so it's not quite as thick. Some people may like that, some people may not. Just a comment, I think this looks better and flows more. So the design, um, they were inspired by Art Deco, and I can kind of see that in here. I really like how it's it's a fairly minimalistic design, but it has a, some pop to it, and it, it just it flows extremely well. It's just, it's a fantastic looking pen, looks great, and it feels very very nice in the hand. The size and weight are about perfect for me. I almost wish it were just a touch heavier um, in the body, but not by much. When it's full of ink, this is almost out. When it's full of ink, it helps a little bit, but it's it's a very very nice size and weight for me. And for where I grip it, it's it's wonderful. The section's really, really good. Um, it's a little bit wider than the Keras Customs ink. Or not ink, the um, Fountain K. Same size as the ink, I believe. <clears throat> and if you look at my video posting history, I've owned the Fountain K before. I got rid of it. It was too small for me. This is much, much better. And I, I, I love the ergonomics of this pen. It feels magnificent. The packaging this came in was very, very special. If you watch, I did an unboxing of this one because I was super excited for it. Um, the packaging on this kind of threw me off because the decagraphs historically have come in um, aluminum tubes. Very, very kind of cool packaging. And this one didn't. And I noticed it fairly quickly. I was like, if this is aluminum tube, it must be pretty small. But no, it didn't come with an aluminum tube. And I was very, very quickly pleased that it didn't because it came in this. This is a rickshaw bags pen sleeve. These things are fantastic. My go-to previously was um, 
these Aston leather pin sleeves. They're very, very nice. I have my Pelican uh, in here at the moment, M805, but they're a little bulky. As you can see, the Pelican's already a large pin, but they're, they're fairly thick and kind of chunky, and they do provide more protection than these, but not enough to justify it, especially for a metal pin to me. They're fantastic. They have this kind of nylon outside, a furry, very soft inside. I'll end up doing a review on these things at some point by their own. Um, just, and I say these because I bought another one. This is the Space Cat version. Just because I like this one so much, I literally, the day I got this pin in, I went ahead and bought this because these are fantastic pin sleeves. So it, it fits in here perfect. None of it sticks out. It completely covers the pin. And while it is a little bulky, it is so much, so much better in the pocket than this gargantuan leather thing. It's it's smaller footprint, small all around, and because of the seam, it's, it's, it's just, okay, I'll, I'll wait till the full review, but you get what I'm saying. It's, it's a fantastic way to package a pen, and it's, in my opinion, the best pen packaging I've ever gotten because I'm still using it. I carry that with me every day, one of those two sleeves in my pocket, at least to work, because I can't carry knives anymore. So that sits in, in the exact spot where my knife used to be. So, massive shout out to Kara's Customs Fred. That was fantastic. The price on these is, in my opinion, pretty good. Um, I had I had a bit of a discount code. I'd not provided because I did a review or anything. But um, with their website, when you sign up, you get like a fifteen percent off or something. So that knocked off a decent bit of it. So I was able to pick this up with the titanium nib for like one hundred and thirty-five. You can get the regular Decagraph, the acrylic, for one hundred and forty. And you have a choice between a steel, titanium, and a um, gold nib. The titanium is an extra $35, and the gold is an extra $80. Having used titanium and gold nibs, it's a bit of a toss-up. Titanium nibs are fantastic. Um, they don't offer quite as much feedback when you're flexing them as gold does, but the price difference is it counts for something. They're fantastic. I love, love, love this nib. The price on it was really good. Last thing I like is the posting. Now, I do not post this pen, but the posting possibilities are amazing. Um, when you post it, it posts extremely deeply, and it posts securely. I would not do this too often because it will scratch up the anodization on this, but because the posting sits so deep, it really doesn't throw off the balance of the pen too bad. It is definitely back heavy but it's, it balances right there in the webbing of my hand, at least for my grip, so I don't have an issue with it. The posting is fantastic. There's a lot to like about this pen, and it's it, overall, it's, it's very good. Let's go ahead and go on to the neutral. On to the neutral. First thing up is the finial texturing. So this pen has something that kind of caught me off guard a little bit. Um, if you look at the top of the the cap here, or as the finial. I'll see if I can get it to show. It's gonna be probably, fair. there we go. So you can see there's texturing there. Well, that texturing, it's kind of similar to like an orange peel texturing, if you know anything about that at all. But as you can see, right there at the bottom, there's some spots that they missed. They did this all the way around. So while I love that they tried to do the texturing, you can see it very well right there, which spots they missed are the lighter gray ones. I appreciate that they tried, and it, it's very cool where it is, but they did not do a very good job of covering that whole surface. So that's that's a, a fairly big knock against, you know, the design in my opinion, which otherwise is almost flawless. I like that it's there. They just didn't do it great. It's somewhere in the middle. The clip, um, in my opinion, is an improved design because it's not two piece anymore. It's one consistent piece, but. You can see there, there's a gap. If you push it down, it'll go down, but it always pops back up. So in a thin pocket, like if I put this in a uh, shirt pocket, it's going to slide everywhere. In a jeans pocket, it's not so bad. It latches on very, very well. Um, the clip is fairly stiff though, so you can kind of get some play out of it, but it's 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 a very durable clip. I'll give it that, but it's it's gonna be garbage in thin pockets. Next thing is the removi removable, not removable, the removable finial. Let me see if I can get it off real quick. 
um, it's kind of odd because the clip, um, when I first got it, would kind of rock back and forth like that, kind of like the Lamy 2000 clip. And I figured out why. It's because this part up here had become loose, and this part up here is removable, which is an odd choice, but that's probably just how they secure the uh, clip. So you can see there, if you want to remove the clip for whatever reason, this is a good way to do it. So it does offer some customization, I guess. There's going to be a small gap, though. Basically, the clip just slots right in there. Uh-oh. That was my bad. Obvious. That's, that's, that's so stupid. That was my bad. Of course it's my bad. I'm the only one here. Idiot. Okay, so it sits down in there, and there's a, uh, a little O-ring on the cap to help seal it, just to prevent the ink from drying out. And by the way, I had, I probably should put this in the like section, but I have this pen inked up with Nemesine Colsac Nebula, which is a, uh, a black shimmer ink for like two weeks without using it. And it is still not dried out. It's amazing. So you can adjust your clip where you want it and then seal it down. And there's no clip wiggle or anything like that. Kind of an odd, um, odd thing, but I'm, I'm sure that's probably the easiest way to achieve the design. And I really don't mind it. I just thought I'd comment on it. On to the dislike. Oh, God. Okay, I had to try real hard here to find stuff that I didn't like about this pen. Um, so I found two things. One, when the cap's tightened, it's fine. But when you loosen it even a little, it gets really rattly. It gets extremely rattly. So that's a minor annoyance. Um... Also, the section on mine was a little nicked when I got it. You can see there that little white mark and the surrounding other pieces. The rest of it's, you know, fine. But but that is a little annoying. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I had to try really hard to find something I didn't like about this pen. Um, that's about the best I can come up with. On to the writing sample. So... We have the Kara's Customs Decagraph. I really hope they make this Decagraph line in aluminum consistently. I think it's a much more compelling material, um, just to me, because they're some of their acrylics are really really nice, but they're, they just do a great job with their aluminum. It's they they really really know what they're doing there. And this has a broad titanium nib. Very, very nice nib. I, I, I commented on this already, but it's it's fantastic. It writes extremely well. And you can definitely get some line variation out of it. Um, I'm, I'm going to show you here what I mean. So we have a reverse writing line, right? A regular line. And we're going to get railroading. I'm almost out of ink. I apologize. But there's a line with some pressure. Let's see if I can do it a little bit more slowly for you guys. No, nope. it's railroading pretty hard right now. Um, there really isn't enough ink in here, and I apologize for that. Give me just a second, actually. I have the ink right here, so I'll just kind of dip it and show you what I mean. Maybe it'll do it now. That's a bit more saturated than it normally is, but you, you can kind of see what I mean, at least line variation wise. You can get some really, really, really nice line variation out of this thing. It really flexes. It honestly flexes a little bit more than the steel flex nibs I have. It's probably the flexiest nib that I have in terms of actual variation. It's very, very nice. So it doesn't normally output quite that wet, but it, you know, it can. Um, when you're flexing, I've no, I haven't had any issues until the pen's literally running out of ink where um, where it railroads or anything like that. So in general, this pen writes very consistently and very, very well. On to the conclusion. So this has very, very, very quickly become one of my favorite pens. It's definitely making the top five this year, without a doubt, and it, it's just fantastic. There are a few gripes I have with it, but I nothing really bothers me about it. It's, it's amazing, it carries very well, it's durable, it's pretty, 
it functions, which is the biggest thing for me is function, and it, it's reliable. Um, probably the thing I like the least about it is that it's a cartridge converter, but that's not really a demerit, that's just personal preference. So it's, it's just, it's a really, really nice, very well done pen, and I honestly hope that Keras Customs keeps up the aluminum offerings of the Decagraph because to me personally, it feels that much more compelling. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you have any questions about this pen or any of their other uh, pens that I may know about, leave them down in the comments. I'll be more than happy to help you out. And if you like what you see here, subscribe and check out my other videos. All right, thanks, guys. Bye.